All right, there are five things that we need to fix in our Etsy shop or in Etsy in general, or our sales are going to suffer. And there's actually five areas that we're going to recap here from a live stream that we just did. And we went in depth for over 50 minutes. But what we're going to do is recap it here for you now. So this way here, you get these five areas and you can fix them if you are in fact making these mistakes. So to help me with this, Mr. Chris Schaefer is going to, well, he's going to take you through these five and uh, I'd pay attention if I was you, maybe even grab a, grab a pen and paper because these are super important. So Chris, take it away. It's funny you say that, Scott, because I already have my pen and paper and I have these jotted down in front of me because it's something I think everybody needs to understand. We can control some things and we can't control some things. And one of the reasons we wanted to have this conversation, Scott, is because the traffic will go up and down. Things will go up and down. Trends will happen. Things will ebb and flow. But what we can control is what we can control. And I know that that doesn't sound nearly as profound as it sounded in my head, but we have to focus on the levers that we can pull. We can't think about the things that we don't have any control over. We don't control what Etsy's ad budget is, for example. And so if traffic goes down one month because Etsy stops spending on ads, we don't have control over that. We do have control over five big things. And we see people making a few different mistakes in each of these five areas. So we wanted to cover each of those. Huge Etsy seller mistake number one, Scott, is chasing trends. And I know this is a hugely controversial thing in the Etsy community. Should I go with the niche-based approach? Should I go with a multiple niche store? Should I just launch every product that occurs to me? Or should I just look for the hottest selling product on the planet and launch that? Because I love dancing avocado mugs. There's a million of them selling right now. There's nothing else I can sell to them. But if there's a bunch of them selling and I find a bunch of products that are selling to a bunch of people, then maybe I will be successful. I will tell you right now, that will not work in 2024 and 2025. Chasing trends, launching random products is going away. And there's a couple big reasons for that. One is the big changes that Etsy has been making to their search engine algorithm. And two is it makes you entirely dependent on the ebb and flow of that trend. Not only do you have to get in at the beginning of that trend, but you also lose all of that traffic and sales as soon as that trend goes away. I don't know about you, but I've never purchased a pet rock. Maybe Scott did, because that was really popular uh, back in Scott's day, but I was never a big pet rock person, right? That was a huge trend for a while. <laughs> Scott just had regular rocks, right? No pet rocks, just regular rocks outside. Maybe one of those fancy hidden key rocks as well, right? That was a big trend for a while. You guys remember Tamagotchi, Pokemon, right? All of these things, these were all trends. And yes, Beanie Babies, right? I still have my Beanie Baby retirement fund hidden somewhere in the basement just because maybe they'll come back someday, but who knows, right? If we're focused on chasing the trend, when that traffic goes away, our sales also dry up. So what is the solution to that? The solution to that is using the niche-based approach. What is a niche? Typically, it's going to be something that someone can identify as. So you will say, I am, they are a fisherman, right? You will not say, I am a dancing avocado mug or I am a dancing avocado. That sounds weird, but you might say, I am an avocado enthusiast or I love avocados. You could potentially turn that into a niche. Fishing would be another good example of a niche. Teachers would be another good example of a niche. Why does that approach work? The big reason especially when we're talking about that in comparison to launching trend-based products is because you have much more consistent demand. Now, the demand on individual products will vary slightly, but the demand overall for the types of products that you are selling, the person who's buying the product, which is who we should be focused on anyway, stays fairly consistent year over year. And that's what we need to be able to build the foundation for a long-term reliable business. So if you are chasing trends right now, if you're trying to launch random products to see what will happen, stop. Take a step back and focus on the niche-based model. The reason we made this number one, Scott, is that that also sets the foundation for avoiding the other mistakes that we're talking about, and it makes everything else a lot easier. So if you're launching random products right now, stop. Focus on building a niche-based store. Huge Etsy seller mistake number two, relying too much on SEO to get traffic. Now, Scott, I know you are a fan, and I am a huge fan of getting organic traffic to the point that if we rank number one, we love it, but we're also still running ads next to that because we want to get as many people from the Etsy search results over to our listings as we humanly possibly can. But what happens when that traffic goes away, right? Maybe the keyword shift, maybe 
traffic to Etsy in general comes down, well, that will mean also our sales come down. Whether we're making mistake number one or we're using the niche-based approach, relying on that SEO as the only way to get traffic is a huge mistake. If we're relying only on the organic side of this, we're missing out on a lot of other things. The easy way to get around this, one, don't just be relying on that. Make sure you're running the other on-platform things like your Etsy ads. But if we're using the niche-based approach, one interesting thing that happens is we can get people to listings without them ever going through the Etsy search, right? So we don't have to worry about ranking number one for every single product or having the perfect keywords. We still wanna set that foundation so that we can get as many people as possible to those listings. But when we're using the niche-based approach, we get a lot of repeat customers. What have we seen with repeat customers? What does the Etsy buyer survey tell us about repeat customers? Well, it tells us that they actually don't typically start at the search results. They start at the shop level because they already know the experience that they're going to have with us. If we're chasing trends, we lose lose out on that entirely and we become much more reliant on SEO to get traffic. And there's a lot of other ways that we can start to bring in traffic, like having an email list and all of the other things that we're going to talk about. But the primary thing to understand here is that if you are only reliant on SEO to get traffic, you're missing out on a huge number of sales. We're missing out on the sales we can get from ads. We're missing out on the sales we can get from repeat customers. And we're missing out on the sales that we can get from some external traffic, which we will talk about here in just a minute. Huge Etsy seller mistake number three, right? Poor conversion rates. And Scott, this is something you and I are so passionate about, not just because of the effect that it tends to have on the organic algorithm, but because of the impact it has on, I don't know, our sales, right? Because if we're converting at 1%, meaning we're getting one out of every 100 people who come to the listing to buy, and we take that to 2%, we've now doubled our sales without needing any additional traffic. Even if that Etsy traffic shifts around for whatever reason, and we're getting less traffic, we can still make more sales by focusing on the conversion rate. And one of the reasons that we think this is so important is exactly that. We can do more with less. It means we don't have to constantly go in and test and tweak our listings. It means we don't have to try to rank number one on SEO. It means we're not as subject to the whims of the algorithm because we are converting at a higher rate. And if this is something you've been struggling with, we put together an entire guide and you can drop conversions down below in the comments. We'll send you a link to that. There is a little bit of a cost associated with that. It's a few dollars. But what we did is we analyzed a bunch of the top selling and top converting. So not just the people who have sold the most, but the people who have sold and converted well above average to figure out what they're doing. And if you can take and learn a few lessons from the people who are converting very highly and apply those to your listings, you will see the same thing happen. The reason we love conversions, yet again, is not only because it has an impact on where we rank organically. The real reason is because any traffic that's coming into that listing will convert at a higher rate, meaning we sell more. Etsy sellers love to launch products, but they forget to come back and optimize. If we can focus a little bit more time on optimizing and a little bit less time on launching the newest, sexiest, trendiest thing, we will sell more over time. If your Etsy sales are suffering and you're making mistake number four, Scott, we have a solution for you. Mistake number four that we see people making all the time. And again, this comes back to number one, this may sound like this is all about choosing the right niche, but again, choosing the niche just makes this easier, is not having multiple products to sell to the same buyer. Etsy is double, tripling, quadrupling down on being able to turn single-time customers into repeat buyers. And you've already heard me say in this video that one of the best ways to do that is to have the niche-based approach, right? If we have multiple things that someone can buy, obviously they're more likely to come back and purchase from us again. But we have to leverage the abilities and the new features that Etsy is giving us in order to do that as well, because we can't just be reliant on those old customers coming back and buying new things. We want to turn new customers, those people we are getting by increasing that conversion rate, by increasing our search engine rank, by driving some traffic from different places. We need to turn those into multiple purchase customers or people who buy multiple items. What does that do for us? Well, one, if they buy two or three things from us by purchasing a bundle or by purchasing multiple times, it increases the likelihood that they continue to buy from us in the future. And Etsy's new bundle feature makes this super simple, whether it's for repeat customers or new people who are finding your shop for the first time. If you're using the random products method, it becomes really difficult to find two things to bundle together. 
if you're using the niche-based approach, you very likely have, I don't know, a bass fishing blanket and a bass fishing pillow that that same bass fishing person or the person who's buying for the bass fishing enthusiast in their life are likely to buy. And if we can present that offer to the customer at the checkout, which is exactly what their new bundle feature does, it makes our lives easier and it makes their lives a heck of a lot easier as well, which means they end up using that feature, buying that bundle, buying multiple things from us, increasing our cart value and increasing the lifetime value of that customer. Having the ability to increase the lifetime value of your customer makes everything else a lot easier. Why? Because then we can start to really double down on anti ads. We can afford to pay a little bit more to acquire that customer. And Scott, I believe it was a uh, marketing genius, Dan Kennedy, who once said, the person who can afford to pay the most to acquire the customer always wins, right? If you can only afford to, to spend $5 to acquire a customer and I can afford to spend 10, I will win every single time because I can literally spend twice as much as you. And so if we can use something like Etsy's product bundle feature in order to do that, it's very easy. All we have to do is set it up. It makes our lives a lot easier. It means we sell more and customers buy more. Big mistake number five we see people making, Scott, comes back and it does relate to number two here just a little bit. But if we've gone through these first four and we're saying that's not my problem, that's not my problem, that's not my problem. Mistake number five is focusing only inside of the Etsy ecosystem. Now, before you say, don't you like Etsy ads? Don't you like Etsy SEO? Don't you guys talk about that all the time? Absolutely. We need to get those things squared away first. So if we're having a conversion rate problem, grab the conversions, maximize your guide, right? If we need some help with SEO, grab the SEO guide. Just drop SEO in the comments below. If you need a better way to find products or you're realizing you're tracing trends, figure out your niche before you worry about this. But we see too many sellers and one of the biggest complaints that we've seen since Etsy made the shift in their algorithm and they did have a pullback in traffic over the last few weeks is that they're 100% reliant Scott, not just on SEO, but Etsy in general as the traffic driver. And they're not focusing at all on external marketing. Now, as soon as I say external marketing, people go, oh, social media, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, all of these places. Those are all fine and good. But the place you need to focus first is on the thing that's going to give you the most results for the least amount of work. Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, even Pinterest in a lot of cases will be substantially more work for fewer results than doing something like focusing on building your email list. You've heard me say it once, you've probably heard me say it a million times, but email is the single highest return on investment activity that anyone in the e-commerce world can do in terms of marketing. If we can get people onto an email list, not only do we build essentially a one-on-one -on -one relationship with those people over time, but we can drive them to listings, even listings that don't necessarily rank inside of Etsy's organic search or that don't have any built-in demand on the platform. All we have to do is write a few words and send them over to a new listing. And we can skyrocket that product in terms of where it is for SEO if we're trying to launch a new product, or we can create demand because we know it's something that our niche-based audience is interested in. And we can drive that product and drive sales for that product, even if no one is already looking for that inside of the Etsy platform. The other thing that having an email list allows us to do is take that same traffic and point it anywhere we want to point it. So let's just say Etsy disappeared tomorrow. If we don't have any external marketing in place, especially an email list, we lose out on all of that. And we're essentially starting from scratch. But if our Etsy account gets suspended or Etsy themselves just vanished into the, into the, the sunset, right? The servers disappeared, Etsy.com went away and the app got deleted from everybody's phones. We would still have a way to get in contact with the people who are most likely to purchase from us anyway. And we can take that and point that to a Shopify store or wherever else we're going to do that. So if you're interested in this, if it's not something you've started to explore yet, drop email in the comments below and we can send you a link to our email guide. The immediate question that I get anytime we say that is, what do you use to do that? We use Everbee email in order to do that. If you are interested in checking out their platform, you can go to brandcreators.com forward slash Everbee and get hooked up with their, the free version of their email program just to get started work out all the kinks, figure out how to do that. The other thing that always comes up when we talk about external marketing or email specifically, Scott, is can I send email to Etsy? I read somewhere or heard somewhere that I can't do that. The answer is yes. And it's this simple. If someone has opted in to hear from you, then you can send them email. If they haven't asked to hear from you, then don't send them email, right? What Etsy doesn't want you to do is just take everybody's email address out of the back end of Etsy 
and put it on a list and start blasting those people. It's very uncomfortable for those people to get that email because they have no idea who you are. And in some places, it's against the law, right? In the US, not so much. Uh, but Etsy doesn't want you to do that, and it would be a violation of Etsy's terms of service. So how do we do it? There's a couple different ways, and you can get them all inside of the email guide. The easiest way is to use something like the fishbowl method, which is our version of essentially a giveaway. You set up a prize. In most cases, it's going to be your products because that way you can ensure that it's something that people are actually interested in anyway. And we allow them to enter their email in exchange for a chance to win a few things from our shop once we have pulled the winner of that giveaway. We give a small discount over to the store and let anybody who didn't win become a winner as well and save a little bit of money. Once we get some people on that list, it starts to snowball. There's a lot of other ways to do it. And we cover a bunch of different things that you can do inside of the email guide. So if you haven't grabbed that yet, just drop an email in the comments below and we'll get that taken care of for you. But Scott, those are the five huge Etsy seller mistakes that we see people making. And if you're not fixing these five things, your Etsy sales are going to suffer. So to recap the recap really quickly, if we're chasing trends and not using an edge-based approach, that is a massive mistake. And it's going to make everything else that you're doing much more difficult. If we're relying too much on Etsy's organic search results to get our traffic, that's going to be a huge hiccup. Anytime the algorithm gods decide to change the algorithm or anytime the overall traffic coming into Etsy changes. Big mistake number three was poor listing conversions. If you're struggling with listing conversions or you aren't sure if you are optimized, suggest checking out the conversion maximizer guide. Again, just drop conversions in the comments down below. Focus on this. This to me is the one place where almost every Etsy store could massively improve their sales without having to do anything else. If we can increase that even half a percent or 1%, it means everything else that we're doing whether it's having products to bundle, whether it's being uh, driving more Etsy ads, whether it's having that email list and driving that over, anytime we can increase that conversion rate, we're going to increase the sales from everything else that we're doing. It's an area that most sellers miss and something more sellers need to focus on. Massive mistake number four, not having multiple things to sell the same customer and not taking advantage of the new bundle feature inside of Etsy. If you're not doing this and you're doing the other three things that we've talked about so far, make sure you go back and do that right now. And thing number five is being 100% reliant on Etsy and not using any form of external marketing, especially not having an email list, which is a resource you can rely on again and again.